I want to take this back to the real world for a second. So now we have CDK4-6 and endocrine therapy first line. Right. Right. We have no data on second line. On second line. So Correct. we've now changed from three lines of endocrine therapy when we had less drugs to we have one definite line <laughs> of therapy. But we're going to see a lot of PI3 so. kinase inhibitor data this year. I think we're going to see uh, two different phase three trials. And you think it'd be better than what and we've seen so far? Yeah. I think these are great drugs. Well, the alpha and inhibitors. They work, yeah. The, the alphas, alpha, yeah. Are, they're, they're sort of beta sparing, but I think that you know these these drugs are, are good, and I've seen really prolonged responses, even in patients who previously received everolimus. So I'm a big fan. You know, the other thing is, you know, w when we look at all of this, is what what's going to happen in patients over time. So you know, I think with when we were looking at bevacizumab, the idea was that you know maybe you responded for longer, but then you didn't respond to anything else afterwards. Something right. happened. Like why is survival not better? You know, there's a lot of crossover here. So survival is hard in hormone receptor positive right. uh, disease trials. But you know, we looked at our long-term follow-up of Paloma two and presented that at San Antonio, and now the PFS in the uh, population with longer term follow up in the patients who receive pavlociclib is 27 plus months. So that's the longest we've seen. I expect it'll be similar in the other trials. And no subset differences. Everybody benefited, even people with long treatment free intervals. So, and that's different than what Matt gets presented on the Monarch study. So, I mean, again, we're getting to the point, and that brings us back to kind of the questions we want to know. I mean, people want to know this in the real world. Are there subsets of patients, you know, that don't need these drugs up front? CDK4-6 can just live on hormone therapy alone. It's very hard to find. Uh, but you look at the subset analysis. Look at the subset, uh, the forest plots with palbocyclib, ribocyclib. It's hard to find patients. But what about in the monarch? Is it monarch three? I'm trying to remember which one it was. This is a combination the trial, of two and three. The combination yeah, so two and three. Combined but analysis. the patients who monarch had, had the, a disease-free yeah. interval of greater than three years did not benefit. But we, the, one of the problems is that uh, most of the confidence intervals were not reached, and some of them were not reached on both ends, but most of them were not reached on the farther end because there's just not long enough follow-up yet. In Paloma 2, even the patients who had a disease-free interval of five years, which it was uh, you know, measured a little bit differently, still benefited and had similar hazard ratios. Now, is that going to be economically feasible around the world? Probably not. But you know, they, clearly, we are benefiting all of these patients, and it may be the people who have very endocrine-sensitive disease could then stay on therapy for you know eight years so that's it because we have those meta-analyses that were presented this year okay I mean you know they presented the data from Falcon first and confirm a single agent fulvestrin I mean is there still a role for that now in an era where you have CDK 4 6 I think I there's know. I think this is a specific patient population which is the very the older p patient population the patients over 80 that we still see in a community practice who have a 10-year disease-free interval or present well, with de novo disease. Well, causes mortality, right? Yeah, well, even that, but just you don't necessarily want to put them on a drug that's going to be expensive and cause fatigue. And those patients, I think, from Falcon, we see that if you have bone-only disease, you do reasonably well with, with a single-agent fulvestrin. I think it's really a very small subset because the CDKs are so well-tolerated in most people. So it's ten, maybe 10% 10 of, of patients or less. And even. I think that's what Matt Getz also showed, is those bone-only patients who have a really long treatment-free interval. I have one patient who's on fulvestrant alone. She had relapsed at 35 years. Yeah, well, that's the point. I mean, you know, <laughs> that greater than eight years from diagnosis kind of deal. <laughs> that's what's very depressing. About. Yeah, <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. 35 years, really? Know. <laughs> but you know what? So you live with it. It's like hypertension. You I mean, bone we're still waiting right. for the, uh, the Mona, Mona Lisa 3 trial with fulvestrant with or without ribocyclib. And uh, based on the Falcon and all these, uh, the first and Falcon studies with fulvestrant, which are really excellent results with fulvestrant alone. If you see an improvement by adding ribocyclib on top of an excellent result, that's quite significant. And we've seen that with abemacyclib, and to some degree in the second line with uh, Paloma 3 as well with palbocyclib. But in the front line, I'm looking forward to the Mona Lisa 3 because again, with Falcon and First, we've seen such, we've seen such good response with fulvestrant alone that if that's a positive trial, it's something to... But I, the thing that struck me about mind. Falcon first confirm is that in the visceral metastatic disease, there wasn't that much of a benefit, right? Is that true? You know, there's, it's true, there, but it, there was no benefit, actually, in I know, Falcon. That, but the, I know. There is a trial going on, in which I think is going to help disease. us a lot, which disease. is the, uh, a trial done in Europe, which has fully accrued, that is looking at uh, fulvestrin versus an AI, uh, with CDK4-6 inhibition. And I think that's going to answer the question you're talking about, um, that trial.
which is I mean, you know, do you have women or women at Memorial that come in? Is there anybody that doesn't get CDK four six? No. In the setting, everybody will get full vet. Will get full Predominantly, plus I, I I remember in my my practice right now I have one woman who uh, came in with de novo metastatic disease. She actually ended up having surgery, had a metaport placed to start adjuvant chemotherapy, and then ended up having a PET scan at an outside hospital showing two lesions in the bone, mm -hmm. and then coming to me and um, I put her just on and she was started on letrozole and she came to me and I continued the letrozole. Um, while we have data from the Falcon for fulvestrant, I feel like a couple of things that I think about fulvestrant, and, and, and let me know if you guys agree with me, but if, if you think that the treatment interval is far along and one would benefit with endocrine therapy alone, I see the role of AIs as equally, well, I know there is survival data with fulvestrant, but we also have survival data in the second line setting with fulvestrant. So I, I can use fulvestrant based on the Paloma 3 data, based on the Mona Lisa data, that we will see the Abema data. And then wearing a drug developer's hat, I feel like most of the drugs that we're developing right now for metastatic disease for ER positive breast cancer, we use fulvestrant as the endocrine partner based on preclinical data that has shown superiority. So if I use a fulvestrant alone up front, I don't know if I really have data. You're missing data. all those patients who have I'm ESR1 mutations with 30% right. I'm missing patients with AKT mutations, right, ESR1 ESR1 mutations, yep. BI2K inhibitors, once we have it. the sandpiper and the solar, and all these trials, we really don't have data for letrozole with pulvocyclib after fulvestrant. We have data for fulvestrant in the second line beyond. So I struggle with that decision. So I love uh, the I Falcon data, but I, I think point. this is how I analyze yeah, it in my head.